Welcome to Uvalde, Texas, home to a handful of influential people like former Texas Governor Dolph Briscoe and former Vice President of the United States, Sean Nance Garner, two Texas icons whose legacy proudly lives on at the Briscoe Garner Museum. Cactus Jack was very over the top. He, you rarely see a picture of him without a cigar in his hand, in his mouth. <laughs> That's how he lived. He was very boisterous, very outspoken, yeah. and he campaigned hard for everything. And yeah, he, he was rather ornery and rebellious. Uh, <laughs> whereas Dolph Briscoe, on the other hand, he was more quiet. He's an extremely generous man, very, very kind man, very quiet man. So their personalities are very opposite. Right. <laughs> but Cactus Jack was also a mentor to Dolph Briscoe. This museum was built in the 1920s and was once the home of John Nance Garner. All right, so the beautiful thing about this house is that each room represents a different stage of his life. The first one being his accomplishments and great things that he did during his terms as vice president. And this second room is dedicated more and it's a little bit more personal, all the things he liked to do outside of the office, canoeing, fishing, all of his different hobbies, all the things he liked to do outdoors. And lastly, the next room is dedicated to his home life and all the things he love to do with his family. And always thinking of Uvalde and after Garner's passing, his wife Eddie donated the house to the city, which is now open to the public. The same themes follow on the second floor where you can find photos and artifacts of Uvalde native Dolph Briscoe, an effective politician who also mastered the art of ranching. Here's a picture of all the land he owned back in the 1970s. It's a lot of land, y'all. Come to find out, the Briscoe family were also big collectors of the arts. Visitors can view their extensive collection at the First State Bank of Uvalde. Everything in this bank, again, is an expression of their personality. Both of them had a hand in everything you see. Yeah. It took them about 45 years to collect everything you see in this building. Wow. Wow. And we get people <laughs> from all over the country that come here that want to see this. Because it's unusual to see a, a bank within a museum, or maybe, maybe we're a museum within a bank. <laughs> yeah. But they come here to see it. Inside, you'll find masterpieces of brilliant painters and sculptors, some dating all the way back to the 1600s. I think the governor was well loved and respected by the community. Yeah. And this was the governor's desires to have a living room for Uvalde. Yeah. And we are honoring that because we are a very true, true tradition. This will not change. And we really do want people to come and appreciate and value the hard work and the hunting for the artwork that the Briscoe family has so that they could share it with today's, but also the legacy and the generations to come. But the history doesn't stop there. This is the four inch historical site where your entire family can participate in the Living History Days. Not only will you learn about the significant role the fort played in Texas' story, but you'll also step back in time and witness how folks lived in the 1800s. So to learn the background of the fort and its narrative, Ariel met up with the president of the Historical Commission, Bill. This fort was established just after the war with Mexico. It was a frontier fort that normally lasts three to five years at the most. Fort Inge was here, was 20 years. And we want people to know that this fort was here. All right, Bill, so you have this booth back here. What's going on? Well, I'm going to show you what an officer's quarters looked like. Okay. This is something that the officers had something better than the enlisted men because they, they would have a large tent similar to this okay. where they had a bed, chairs, dishes, place to shave, place to work. Oh my. It may be creek, but it won't, it won't fall. Okay, oh, this makes me nervous. <laughs> so if this is what the commanders yep. would stay in and sleep in, what would the enlisted men? So that's it. This is, this is where the enlisted men live. 
as many as four men sleeping together. Well, um, I definitely prefer the commander's quarters. <laughs> And there were plenty of other tents to go to to learn about our rich Texas history. There's a unique, uh, very brief bit of history that includes camels in the army in the 1850s. Wow. This, of course, is a garden pest for everybody else, but in 1860, <laughs> it was a food source. This is dandelion root. It would have been dug and cut and dried. It was eaten. During the Indian Wars, it wasn't always about fighting. We actually did more building than we did fighting. We were surveyors, we were map makers, we were carpenters, we were farriers, we were blacksmiths. Wow. So we did a little bit of Never. everything. And to top the day off, we were actually allowed to participate in the firing of a cannon. No! Boom. There you go. All right. Advance around. Okay, quick and prime, dude. Yeah. Getting nervous? Yeah. You're going all over the place. I know. You ready? I believe so. 